Hi Booktube, I'm here today to discuss the book Two Solitudes by Hugh McLennan. This is a classic Canadian novel and I read this as a buddy read with Amy over at From the Dusty Bookshelf. I will link her channel down below. Um, so this is a first edition so you can't really tell what book it is, um, but here it is, Two Solitudes, Hugh McLennan. Um, I got this from my library. This is a novel that is meant to sort of um, sort of capture everything about 20th century Canada. And um, I had never heard of this before uh, um, Amy e, and uh, it's not very well known outside of Canada, but also too in Canada it's not super well known outside of literary circles. But um, but I do think it definitely deserves to be resurfaced because it is very exquisitely written and um, I would really highly recommend this to anyone who's interested in sort of an introduction to Canadian literature. The only pieces of like Canadian literature that I read before this was some Margaret Atwood and Ellen Montgomery from the Anne of Green Gables series. So um, this is really sort of iconic of the cut of the culture and uh, yeah, so when I first um, heard of it, well, when I, I heard of it through Amy, and she has read this, I think, four times now, um, three or four times now, and I, um, I was, um, I basically wanted to read it based off of her word alone, because um, as the name is kind of ambiguous, Two Solitudes. It does make sense at the end, but it, um, so this book begins um, in 1917 in the midst of World War I, and, um, and it's a multi-generational story that begins in St. Marc, Quebec, which is a small French-Canadian uh, French community. Um, there are multiple main characters, and from um, Athanase um, Tallard, um, Tallard, who is a parliamentary figure and a wealthy man, um, a wealthy man and a stand-up figure in the community, to the father, who is a um, traditional uh, French Canadian who wants to preserve Catholicism, to his sons, and um, uh, one of whom was born um, with a French Canadian mother, Marius, and becomes a very um, very uh, pro-revolutionary uh, pro uh, French Canadian who wants to who um, who uh, wants to fight for uh, French Canadians' rights to his youngest son who was born with his second wife who was Irish Irish um, Canadian and um, whose name is Paul and so as the novel goes on it takes place over multiple decades and we see um, the family growing and changing, and um, the novel, uh, the name Two Solitudes is meant to capture the divisions between both French and English Canada, but also between men and women at the time, between war and peace, between agricultural um, agriculture and industrialized societies, and it's really meant to capture the um, divisions that Canada is experiencing during this time, being caught in between these time periods. Um, McLennan's writing is absolutely beautiful. It's not merely just flowery prose, it's very, um, well, uh, it um, references lots of beautiful, um, it references lots of um, uh, nature and um, historical time periods and philosophy. It um, the characters are very well crafted. The um, you can really get a huge sense out of who the characters are and um, how uh, and their own personal motivations and how that causes them to clash with each other. Um, and uh, like for example, Athanase Tallard is um, is not quite an atheist, but he is definitely um, a heretic um, and doubts the authority of the church, and that leads him to clash with the father of Saint, um, the father of the local parish of Saint Mark, and especially when uh, Catholicism is so closely tied to French Canadians that um, really begins a new series of um, like uh, of racial divisions because um, part of being French Canadian is being Catholic 
Um, so the novel is split up into three parts, and the three parts are for three different time periods. Hold on, let me... So... Oh, I'm sorry, four parts, yes. So the first part is from 1917 to 1918. The second part is from 1918 to 1921. The third part is just 1934. And the fourth part is 1939. Um, the, this is definitely a slow burning story. It's about 370 pages. And uh, to be perfectly honest, some of, the, um, some of it could probably have been shaved down, um, but there, uh, but it really takes the time to add layer upon layer to develop each character and to take them to new different places too. They go beyond Saint Mark. They go to ooh, all. Um, they go to completely different corners of the world and back to Canada. And uh, I really, I mean, if you're into sort of um, action. In your um, in your literature, this wouldn't really be for you. But if you like slow burning um, slow burning stories that uh, keep adding layers and layers, then this is quite good. I um, the uh, um, I just wanted to take a short brief passage to kind of explain the writing style. Um, again, it's not just flowery. It also references lots of the ethnic and racial and religious divisions, and because of that, it's quite smart as well too. And so, um, oh, it, there's um, one of my pet peeves is when um, the prose is just flowery and where there's no substance to it. But you can, but all of the prose means something um, and seeks to reinforce the um, overall themes of the novel. Um, <clears throat> he felt crushed. He wanted to explain that every man must act in accordance with his own inner compulsion. Now he knew that she had guessed what this compulsion was, and that it had often been no more than the product of his physical condition at various times of his life. His nature had always demanded a new idea of itself, and when he had his vigor, women provided it. Now no woman can satisfy him, nor he a woman. Nothing was left him but principles and ideas. God, he thought, is that all there is to it? And then it occurred to him that perhaps all wars and revolutions and movements of history started from sources just as trivial and undignified. He saw the people in their churches and nationalisms huddling together under flags and banners in desperate attempts to escape the knowledge of their own predicament. They were all silhouettes moving almost accidentally for seventy years or so over the ridge of the world between darkness and darkness. Among them he saw himself. Then he laughed harshly, mocking himself. Kathleen, everyone he could think of. When I make money, she'll think I'm right. They all will. And the thought that he had never known a person who sincerely despised money gave, a, gave him a faintly bitter feeling of vengeance for his own inadequacy. Um, yeah, so uh, that just, in that section, a character who I don't want to name because of spoilers has been experiencing his decline from power. And he... Um, is scrambling to do what he can to sort of reestablish himself, and um, and his feelings of inadequacy are spilling over into his familial relationships, and um, yeah, I think the only few criticisms that I would have of this, aside from the fact that it probably could have been edited a bit better, but again, this was from, this was published in 1945, so it's not particularly, um, um, so I guess modern sort of standards of length and whatnot are a bit different. The one major problem that I had with it is that McLennan cannot write female characters throughout the novel. Um, the male characters are much more finely developed than the female characters, and the female characters are almost always the villains. And in addition to that, they're almost all defined with uh, sexual characteristics as well. They are, um, uh, and when I say villains, I don't mean like, you know, evil, you know, uh, no motivation, but just has to do, but just has to propel the plot forward. I mean, the people who do the one thing that will change the plot that kind of causes the other characters' lives to disintegrate. Um, the female characters are portrayed as incompetent and as um, 
not knowing about the political or fine matters, things like that, which again, if it had just been one character, wouldn't have been a huge deal, but because it's character after character, female character who portrays that, at, um, it does become a, um, a, uh, it does become a, um, troubling theme. Uh, there is, uh, hmm, uh, a few other problems that I had with it. In addition, um, these are just nitpicking details, but there were times where I felt like he was head hopping um, and from one perspective to another, or like the perspective he had chosen, particularly in parts three and part four, when two characters get together and get married, I feel like he could have picked a different character's head to be in to narrate that scene. Um, near the end, the novel swings to the much more autobiographical, and the characters who he chooses to portray reflect him and his own wife, and then his own, um, and his own yearnings to write a novel that captures Canada. And that really, uh, and I really enjoyed that, but I felt like there could have been a few other ways to kind of connect it with the first few um, portions of the book. Uh, yes, but the, uh, um, overall though, I was very happy with this. I did give it five stars, even though it wasn't perfect, but it just has remained in my mind so well, and I thought that it was so exquisitely crafted. I really enjoyed it, and, um, yeah, but my most obvious problem was the inadequate um, character development of female characters, which I think must just be laziness, or um, because he writes other char other male characters so well. But yes, that's Hugh McLennan. I would like to read more by him now, um, but I, uh, at some point, ain't, um, <laughs> after I get through the other rounds of TBR books that I have to get to, Yes, so pick up. I would highly recommend Two Solitudes for some classic Canadian literature. It's a great place to start, I think, with um, Canadian lit. And um, let's see, was there anything else I wanted to say? <laughs> um, hmm. Overall, I, um, oh, it does start a little bit slowly, but just keep up at it. It will take maybe um, about 40 or 50 pages to get into it because you will be confused, but um, it is worth it, and it is definitely worth the time, and once um, once I was about 100, 150 pages in, I just wanted to keep reading, and the pages were just flying by. Um, yeah, so pick up Two Solitudes if you are um, are so inclined. Tell me what you thought, if you have read this book in the comments, or if it seems interesting, and thank you all for watching. I shall see you all next time. Doi!